Hello, it is Thursday again, and it's time for Bible study. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Children of God, we have so much to cover today. And as usual, the purpose of our Bible study is to encourage the children of God with the Word of God. And we are still in our study of building our faith and just looking at what God did for those in the past because we know it encourages us and keep us going because we know it will do it for us today. Amen. And so today we're looking at the topic of it's not the numbers. It's not the numbers. And we're going to talk about Gideon and we're starting in the book of Judges verses 6 to 33 through Judges 7 through verses 25. So we're going to read. Please, please share this with your friends and family. We want to get the word out and that we all can stay encouraged and know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he loves us and nothing is more important to him than us. Amen. So with that being said, I'm going to start reading from Judges chapter 6. Verse, 30, verse 33, all the way through Judges chapter 7. New Living Translation. Please take notes, write everything down, and share with your friends and family. So here we go. Soon afterward, the armies of Midian, Amalek, and the people of the East formed an alliance against Israel and crossed the Jordan, camping in the valley of Jezreel. Then the spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with power. He blew a ram's horn as a call to arms, and the men of the clan of Ebiezer came to him. He also sent messengers throughout Manasseh, Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, summoning their warriors, and all of them responded. Then Gideon said to God, If you are truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me in this way. I will put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you are going to help me rescue Israel as you promised. And that if just what ha and that is just what happened. When Gideon got up early the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung out a whole bowl full of water. Whoa. Verse 39. Then Gideon said to God, please don't be angry with me, but let me make one more request. Let me use the fleece for one more test. This time, let the fleece remain dry while the ground around it is wet with dew. So that night, God did as Gideon asked. The fleece was dry in the morning, but the ground was covered with dew. Children of God, can you just imagine that? Think about that for a moment. When you have your mat outside the front door and we have the night dew that makes the mat wet, everything around it is wet. That's just an automatic process because of the way gravity and climate and the way the weather is. Then he asked God to do the opposite, though, to make the fleece not be wet, uh, which is what he's doing. He's fleecing God. He's asking him to make sure that he understood the, his instructions. And God did it the, the reverse way. Make the ground wet and, the, and the, the, the mat be dry. I don't know if you really, really, really think about how God did that. Because that's in, in itself is incredible. But that's not the best part. Let's move on to the best part. So now we're in Judges chapter 7. So Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and his army got up early and went as far as the spring of Herod. The armies of Midian were camped north of them in the valley near the hill of Moreh. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. If I let all of you fight the Midianites. The Israelites will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. Who do we have in the congregation who that likes to boast about what we, what I can do? If you're a boaster, 
this story is for you. Think about what's happening and think about how God comes alongside and help us. We don't do anything on our own. Amen. Everything is through God's strength because he lives inside of us. Verse three. Therefore, tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid, that they may leave this mountain and go home. So 22,000 of them went home, leaving only a thousand, I'm sorry, 10,000 who were willing to fight. Now, mind you, the number actually started out at 32,000. So Gideon started out, if you read up further in that chapter six, it started out with Gideon summoning everyone and 32,000 able-bodied armed men came to go to fight this war, right? And now he did the fleecing process. It was a whole lot to read, so I kind of summarized that part for you. And now God said, mm -mm, 32,000 is way too many because if they all fought on their own, they'll say, it's because we had all these good men. That's why we won. So God said, mm -mm. so now 22,000 left and Gideon is now moving along to fight with 10,000. Verse four. But the Lord told good Gideon, they are still too many. Bring them down to the spring and I will test them to determine who will go with you and who will not. When Gideon took his warriors down to the water, the Lord told him, divide the men into two groups. If one group put all those who in one group, I want us to be clear. He says in one group, Put all those who cup water in their hands and lap it up with their tongue like dogs. In the other group, right? Put all those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. Only 300 of the men drank from their hands. All the others got down on their knees and drank with their mouths in the stream. Mm, mm, mm. Verse seven, the Lord told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So Gideon called the provisions and ram's horns of the other warriors. So, so let me back up. Let's go back to verse seven. The Lord told Gideon with these 300 men. So we went from 32,000 to 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites, send all the others home. So Gideon collected the provisions and ram's horns of the other warriors and sent them home, but he kept the 300 men with him. The Midianites camp was in the valley just below Gideon. That night, the Lord said, Gideon, get up. Go down into the Midianite camp, for I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pura. Listen to what the Midianites are saying, and you will be greatly encouraged. Then you will be eager to attack. So Gideon took Pura and went down to the edge of the enemy camp. Verse 12. The armies of the Midianite, I'm sorry, the armies of the Midian Amalek and the people of the east had settled in the valley like a swarm of locusts. Their camels were like grains of sand on the seashore. Too many to count. Oh, wow. So these opposing armies were too many to count. And Gideon only had 300 men. That's why my title today, it's not in the numbers. It's not in the numbers. It's, uh, then what's relevant is who's on your side. It's not in the numbers. Amen. So verse 13, Gideon crept up just as a man was telling his, com his companion about a dream. The man said, I had this dream and in my dream, a loaf of barley bread came tumbling down into the midnight camp. It hit a tent, burned, turned it over and knocked it flat. His companion answered, your dream can mean only one thing. God has given Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite, victory over Midian and all its allies. 
when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed in worship before the Lord. Then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, get up for the Lord has given you victory over the midnight hordes. He divided the 300 men into three groups. <laughs> so now we have 300 men divided into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. Then he said to them, keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I tell, as I do. As soon as I and those with me blow the ram's horn, blow your horns too. All around the entire camp and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Verse 19. It was just after midnight, after the changing of the guard, when Gideon and the 100 men with him reached the edge of the midnight camp. Suddenly, they blew the ram's horns and broke their clay jars. Then all through gr three groups blew their horns and broke their jars. They held the blazing torches in their left hands and the horns in their right hands, and they all shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Each man stood at his position around the camp and watched as all the Midianites rushed around in a panic, shouting as they ran to escape. When the 300 Israelites blew their ram's horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other with their swords. Those who were not killed fled to places as far as Beth Sitha near Zeroth and the border of Abel near Tabath. Then Gideon set for the warriors of Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh, who joined in chasing the army of Midian. Gideon also sent messengers throughout all the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down to attack the Midianites. Cut them off at the shallow crossing of the Jordan River at Beth Barmar. So all the men of Ephraim did as they were told. They captured Obri and Zeb, the two Midianite commanders, killing Obri at the Rock of Obri and Zeb at the wine press of Zeb, and they continued to chase the Midianites. Afterward, the Israelites brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan River. So, children of God, it's not in the numbers. Amen? It's not in the numbers. God is doing the fighting. And as we started last week, if we just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, he will fight for us. The, the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. Amen. So even though you feel that what's going on to you is a personal attack upon you, it's not. It's the principalities and the powers of the world attacking the spirit of God that dwells inside of you. And God is inside of you. And he is the one that will address the enemy. It doesn't have to be you. It's not you. It's never you. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. John 16, 33 says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart. Because I have overcome the world. Amen. James 1, 2 to 4 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith, oh, come on, somebody, is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. We have to go through saints of God because that's the only time we will know that we have what we need already and we are needing nothing. Amen. Ephesians 6, 13 says, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of, in the time of evil. I'm going to say that again, in the time of evil. After the battle, you will still 
be standing firm. We got to recognize that we are already seated with God in heavenly places. The battle is already won. We're just walking through it now because we are in two places at the same time. I need you all to realize that, saints of God. If he, uh, Philippians 4, 19, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Now I'm going to read for you, and I want you to listen to me carefully, children of God. I'm going to read John 14, 15 to 27. Listen to me, children of God. Let your spirit listen and absorb these words. Make sure you share this to everyone that you know. It says, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. We know what the advocate is. That's the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you soon. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my father and you are in me and I'm in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Children of God, we have nothing to worry about. Verse 22, Judas not just Icarus, but the other disciple with that name said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal your, this is what he says, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Here is Jesus' answer, verse 23. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make her a home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me and remember my words are not my own. What I'm telling you is from the father who sent me. I'm telling you these things now while I'm still with you. But when the father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. I am leaving you with a gift. Now here comes the gift. Children of God. Listen with your spirit. Verse 27 says, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. I'm going to read it for you again because I want you to really get this in your heart and in your mind. I am leaving you a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Children of God, God's got you. Remember, all this is temporary. It's going to burn up and pass away. Our life with Christ is everlasting and nothing can change that. All we have to do is be obedient, listen to the Holy Spirit, keep our hands in God, and know that he's fighting our battles for us. Our faith grows when we are tested. Trials and tribulations give us a testimony. Each test becomes a testimony. We are not victims. We are victorious. And every opportunity that we get, we should be talking to somebody about Christ. Amen. God's got us. It is well. Amen. So it's not in the numbers. We don't need a whole lot of people, a whole lot of stuff. We just need to know that we've got God. You plus God is the majority. It's not in the numbers. Amen. It's who's on your team. Is it God on your team? Is it God on your side? 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to think about that. We're praying for Lydia, Ayana, Emmett, Starlet, Giovanni, Shackelford, Corey, Jordan, Cassandra, Georgette, Norma, Anthony, Julian, Walker, and family, Elijah, Don, Lee, Maria, Patrick, Isabella Roberts. We have two James, Lorraine Rogers, Grace, Michael, Mario, Romario, Pastor T, Leonie Walker, Tracy Cisco, Lee, Marlene, Franklin, Donna, Jean, Wright family, Thomas family, Elvis, CJ Nash, Ashley family, Francisco Harris family. We're praying for Nigeria, Israel, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Africa, Puerto Rico, Madeline Turner, Andre, Victoria, Justin, Margaret and family, Maxine. And we're giving everyone else that we have in our hearts that we might not have mentioned today. Let's go to prayer. Father God, we pray for every country. We pray for Ukraine as well as Russia. Lord, you know all that's going on with this war, Lord God, and you know all the other rumors of wars. But Father God, we're standing flat-footed on your word. We know it's not in the numbers. We know that you are fighting the battle. We know that you will go before us. You are in back of us. You are beside us. And nothing happens, Lord God, outside of your will. I give everybody that I prayed for on this list, I lift them all up to you, Father God. You know everything about everyone, and we put them all in your hands. I ask a blessing upon them all in the matchless name of Jesus. We thank you for the time that we've spent in study. I pray for each person as they receive this word and their families and everyone connected to them. I thank you, Lord God, for the word that encourages us and strengthens us. We know the battle is not ours, it's yours. We fight not against human flesh, but principalities and powers. And we know that the Holy Spirit that's inside of us is already in the vindicating business that moves and 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 goes ahead of us. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord God, and we just praise you right now. It's in Jesus' holy and matchless thing we pray. And we say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, children of God. It was so good being with you on today. Have a wonderful rest of your week, your weekend, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.